So, it's the end of yet another week, and here on this channel, that means one thing and one thing only. Every weekend, I post an episode of this series we do called Your Take Not Mine, where I turn to you, the viewers, to give me your hottest NBA takes of the week based on what's going on at the time, and I then choose my favorite submissions and discuss them in a video. This week, a lot has been going down in the world of Summer League basketball, and even more big-time performances have been happening amongst the young guys, and on top of that, we've also had some big trade news reported on the rumor front, so of course we have plenty to discuss. In order to submit your takes, I make a community post on either the day of or the day before the video, similar to the one that you see on your screen now, so if you want a chance to be featured in a future episode, be sure to stay on the lookout for that. Before we start though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, as all support is very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Robin, and they say that the Suns are going to regret matching the massive contract extension that DeAndre Ayton just received and should have let him just go to the Pacers. The DeAndre Ayton saga came to an end this week, and if I'm being completely honest, it did not end how I expected it to at all. Throughout the tail end of last season, there were already rumors spreading about Ayton not being satisfied with his role in the team's offense, wanting more touches and overall opportunities to impact the game on that end of the floor. Additionally, the Suns pretty much made it clear from the jump that they were not valuing Aiton like a max player, and not once throughout the entire free agency process did they even offer him a contract. The breakup between the two sides seemed inevitable at one point, so when the Indiana Pacers offered Aiton a hefty $133 million contract for four years, I, along with many others, assumed that the Suns were prepared to let him go to the Pacers, but instead they matched it and brought him back because he was a restricted free agent. At the very least, most assumed it would be in the Suns' best interest to explore the sign and trade market, and in one of my previous videos where I was reviewing hypothetical trade offers, I discussed the fact that DeAndre Ayton for Miles Turner of the Pacers in a sign and trade would be beneficial for both teams, but that didn't end up happening. After how the Suns' season ended last year, I can't imagine things not being awkward in the locker room if they just run it back with the same group of guys. Ayton's role will still be relatively the same, and with so many other teams in the Western Conference getting better, they very well could end up being passed by. The next take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Mr. Milkers, and he says that if the Knicks trade for Donovan Mitchell, it will be a disaster, and that they won't even come close to making the playoffs. In case you've been living under a rock lately, the Utah Jazz are reportedly open to trading Donovan Mitchell after having already moved Rudy Gobert this offseason, and the New York Knicks have become the team most predominantly linked to them as a potential destination he could go to. Since this has become the case, the discourse surrounding Mitchell has honestly been kind of crazy, and I've seen some pretty outlandish takes about the subject. When Donovan Mitchell first started to emerge in the league a few years ago, his shot-creating prowess and immediate impact as a volume scorer was praised to the point where he may have become a bit overrated at the time, but he would then step his game up in the postseason, so it's tough to argue against him as one of the best scoring talents the league has to offer right now. Flash forward back to the present now, and all of a sudden, the public seem to have done a complete 180 on him now that he's actually available on the trade market, and nobody wants to give anything up for him. Mitchell has one of the highest postseason scoring averages of all time, and sure, you can say he's a guy who takes a lot of shots in general, but he's still relatively efficient in doing so. For Knicks fans not wanting to trade for him, might I remind you of the fact that your franchise has achieved pretty much nothing over the last decade? Going back to the original take here, the guy says the Knicks won't even make the playoffs if they trade for him as if they didn't just finish in 11th place in the Eastern Conference last year. On top of that, being afraid of trading draft picks for Mitchell is equally as insane when the Knicks just ended a 20-year drought of extending a player's contract after drafting them, so their track record in the draft isn't exactly that great either. Donovan Mitchell absolutely makes the Knicks a better team. They need to eventually make moves acquired 
acquiring top talent like this and being hesitant about losing young guys that are fringe rotation players in order to do so is just an example of overthinking an obvious move. I can understand Knicks fans not wanting to include RJ Barrett in the trade offer, but I've seen them say things like they don't want to give up players like Obi Toppin, Miles McBride, and Quentin Grimes for Mitchell, and that's where the absurdity starts. The next take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Andrew, and he says that Russell Westbrook's agent was right about what he said about him. So this is somewhat of a niche take if you're missing the context, so I'll fill you in. Yesterday, Russell Westbrook fired his agent, and the news broke via an Adrian Wojnarowski article in which the former agent gave a statement for why the two have parted ways. It's a fairly long statement, so I'll include a screenshot of the full thing for you to read on your screen now, but to summarize, he basically said that Westbrook wants out of Los Angeles, but when the agent told Russ that his value is diminished based on the poor season he had last year, combined with how much money he is making next season, there isn't really a market for him, and Westbrook clearly did not want to come to terms with that reality check. Unfortunately, sometimes in life the truth hurts, and this is clearly an example of that. Is it ideal for Westbrook to have to play for the team that has been actively shopping him this offseason? No, it's not. Do he and LeBron James clash in terms of usage and playstyle? Yeah, they do a little bit. But the truth is that there aren't any teams that want to go out of their way to trade assets for Westbrook right now, and his best option is to stay in LA for the last year of his contract, whether he likes it or not. The Lakers also just hired head coach Darwin Ham, who has had nothing but good things to say about Russell Westbrook since his arrival and has been very vocal about utilizing Russell Westbrook in a way that will maximize his talents. So if Westbrook still wants to leave despite all of this being the case, then quite frankly he is delusional about the situation that he's currently in. And finally, the last take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Toasty, and he says that the Raptors shouldn't ruin their balanced starting lineup and their future by trading for Kevin Durant. So in the Kevin Durant sweepstakes, there have been a few teams primarily linked to the possibility of acquiring him, but then the Raptors have been said to be a dark horse in the race. They've got draft capital at their disposal, they have valuable depth pieces, and they have some promising young talent. The Nets have stated that they want a star caliber player included in a trade, but an obscure clause prohibits a lot of the league's current stars from going to the Nets because of Ben Simmons having been acquired on the same kind of contract that only allows one such individual to be on a team via a trade. However, one star that is able to be moved to Brooklyn is Pascal Siakam, which is why the Raptors are viewed as a dark horse in the race, since he's definitely one of the best players a team in the sweepstakes could offer them. If the Raptors can build a package around him, then it should be a no-brainer from my point of view. The Raptors are literally a team that proved that they could acquire a win-now superstar and take home a title doing so when they did it with Kawhi Leonard. I agree that offering both Siakam and possibly Rookie of the Year winner Scotty Barnes would be way too much, but anything outside of that is probably fair game and would make them a lot better. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about the takes we discussed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.